Hello, people of God. This is my Jacob Sweet TV, and I'm the P to P singer. This is episode 165. Episode 165. We are still talking about Lagoon, the village and the farm that the church embarked on, as it were, and about Albert. Now, Remember what the Lord said to me in the last episode that we always forget his very words. I've listened to many preachers actually. People can put quotes from Genesis to Isaiah to Jeremiah. You know, we, will have, we can quote Paul Apostle. But we, we tend to gloss over what the word of the Lord is. He told me, I still do not know why he came to Senegal. So most of the things I preach, I'm always trying to pick it from the very words of the Lord Jesus. And he told me I should forgive my word. It was a, la a lady in the dream. But Albert was coming from the direction of Iwo, which is Lagoon. And my in-law, in quotes, had come from Iwo to bring a herb that was precious. Hmm. Before I continue the story, I promised in the last ep episode that I will sing the last chorus that I sang to remember a particular word of the Lord that says, God did not send a son to the world to judge the world, but that through him, the world might be saved. I've always wondered. I, like I said in the last episode, I'm, I'm yet to have a full understanding of that scripture. But the Lord says, repeat my words to my people. And I say that allows me to remember the song we sang in secondary school in the scripture union. He did not come to judge the world. He did not come to blame. He did not only come to seek. It was to say he came, and when we call him Savior, and when we call him Savior, and when we call him Savior, Savior, then we call him by his name. And when we call him Savior, and when we call him Savior, and when we call him Savior, then we call him by his name. That message is for another day. But remember, the Lord said, repeat my words. And um, he said, forgive. Forgive your word. If I had apologized to you, that's one of my words. Forgive. Forgive. So Albert, now, one day the, the, the bell rang of the door. There was a knock on the gate of the door of the house. And it was my husband that came downstairs to open the gate. He turned out to be Albert in his farm uniform. And Daddy knew that I had been worried about him. So he brought him inside the house. He could not even sit on any proper seat because he felt it was dirty. Where have you been? I was angry. Where have you been? Where have you been? Where have you been? You this guy? Uh, did I not warn you before that you should be careful? Did I not tell you they will envy you? Did I not tell you that trouble was looming? Did you hear? You were just walking about you as a very proud man. Have I, did I not even quote the scripture to you that they envied Isaac? Did I not warn you that this trouble was coming? And they were going to look for something to get you into trouble. My husband said, calm down, calm down. I was still, I was still seething. Yeah, I calmed down, I calmed down. And daddy said, allow him to talk. He apologized. He did everything to apologize very humbly. And he told me his own side of the story. How the woman had been pestering him. How he had been running away from trouble. How he remembered that it was a woman that took him to a strange village because of infidelity or unfaithfulness. And how this man, woman was older than him and he did not want a relationship with, with her. 
and how he, she pestered him and pestered him. Then I asked him, did you tell Alaji you need to He said no. Did you tell anybody in the village? He said, at that point, I got angry again. And my husband said, but you didn't do that right. Who will now believe you? And I told the story of how he came home one day. When there was nobody else in the house, he didn't know that the woman was hiding somewhere and came after, she came after him and practically said what Potiphar's wife said to Joseph, lie with me, lie with me, lie with me, what is wrong with you? And he was, he tried to struggle out of it and as soon as he got out to the main road, there were youths coming and the woman came out, screamed and said he had tried to force me to lie with him. That was the beginning of the trouble. He himself recognized the fact that people had been bad mouthing him and had been saying, where did this one come from? That he wants to take over all our village just by sheer looking at the beauty, the beauty, the sheer beauty of his farm. Albert is a good farmer. East is a good farmer. I would recommend him anybody anytime you know you had a good point I, I, had, I had defended him behind him I had thought that what happened was what happened but I was wondering why when you knew you were in trouble why did you not get in touch with me that day I cooked for him gave him I took him to the bathroom you know brought everything for him to have his a shower clean himself up Daddy had to give him some of his own clothing so that he could have something for part of it. Do not forget that I said he was a trader at the Mile 12 market in Lagos. I, I, I asked him, can you go to the market for me? If Albert goes to the market for you, I thought that he stood in the market with all the things that he was going to bring. He had he lived in, in the market. He walked in the market and he knew all the nooks and corners of the market. They quickly went to the market for me that day. Meanwhile, I had to speak to Alaji Onidunki and I told him this dream. I told him this dream. How, even though he was a Muslim, incidentally, the Alaji passed on, you know, about one month away from this time I'm recording. I'm recording this. This episode today, the second of January. I don't know when you'll be viewing it. Alaji Pastor, he was a good man. I hope one day that I will still have to do a video of him. How a Muslim man accepted me, a Christian, without any prejudice. May his soul rest in peace, like the people of the world will say. Now, I told Alaji, the Lord Jesus came to me. And said to me, somebody had apologized to me. Why am I still holding the person in content? Why am I still angry with that person? I said, well, it's the same thing. Even if you do not accept Jesus to be your savior, you accept him as a prophet. The prophet is saying, forgive. Why would you forgive this guy? He is with me. He came in his farm dress. And he wants to come back to his farm. Please, can you tell the villagers to forgive him? That was when they said he should come back. But I did not trust them. And so I asked Pastor Maker to go with him. And even then, when Pastor Maker got there, remember what I said. He had to eventually kneel down in front in the midst of the villagers to so say, please, take this guy back. I, I told them on the phone that I'm sure that they all have children outside their neighborhood, outside their village. They had children who had traveled either to Lagos or even abroad. But we are all strangers and sojourners in other people's lands. And if they wanted their own children to be well taken care of, they should please start by taking care of Albert. And somehow, somehow that philosophy worked for them. By the time Pastor Maker left, and he went, and he also used that to say, look, I am an Igbo man. I'm living amongst the Yorubas. 
I'm not giving me any problem. This man is a just man. He's living amongst the Yorubas. Please let him also live as comfortably as you will expect your own children to live in any place that they have gone to sojourn. Eventually, there was peace and they allowed Albert to stay back. I think the youths were still against him. Either because of their own idleness or the fact that I don't know. Because I kept saying to them, learn from this man. If I was going to end up as a farmer and I live in that neighborhood, I would have sat down with that guy to tutor me. Oh, he did almost the impossible. I told you I went visiting him. When he didn't know I was coming, his farm was beautiful, neat, clean. It's something that anybody should aspire for. But instead of learning from him, we envied him. And unfortunately, instead of him also to be humble, he was a little puffed up. You know, the story of Nebuchadnezzar. I have always asked the Lord, why were you that much against Nebuchadnezzar? If any one of us had built a city as beautiful as the Babylon of the days of Nebuchadnezzar, I tell you, you will have beaten your chest. You will have said, if I, I tried, I have done something good. But that was exactly what the Lord did not want him to do. Because the Lord was passing on a message as far back as then, that nothing is given to a man. A man can own nothing except it is given from above. So Albert should also have learned. He should have kept his shoulders down. But he looked at his works and he looked at the lazy people of the village. And he felt like a king. Unfortunately, his pride worked against him. And we had to use humility to cancel the evil that pride had created. He did not come to judge the world. Jesus did not come to blame. He did not only come to seek it, it was to save that he came. And when we call him Savior, we call him by his name. Trouble was needed at the top, but it was not completely gone. It was going to spout again. I have to tell you in the next episode. I had to go personally to Lagoon because I don't I didn't think a pastor maker could have handled the trouble that started again. Hmm. You know that sometimes the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ that you claim to follow, the fact that you are his disciple and you are truly a disciple, and you are Christ like. That is the only thing that will help you to solve a big problem. Any other thing will fail. But like we always say, Jesus never fails. This is my Jacob's Way TV. I am Dupi Dupi Singer. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Share and leave a comment. And do all the needful. And don't go away just yet. The story is not ended. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.